Uh, first thing I'd like to do is congratulate uh, Coach Gilmore on the Hall of Fame. Um, incredible career, inspirational career to a lot of young coaches like myself that admired the program that he has built from afar. And uh, now seeing it up close in the state and just uh, know how hard it is to reach that level and to, you know, a guy like, uh, guy like that and a program like that that's, you know, consistently in the hunt to go to Omaha and then when they um, won it all in 2016, just an uh, incredible legacy that he leaves behind. So just wanted to uh, acknowledge him and, and uh, the great team that they had and have always had, the program that they've always had. I uh, also would like to just from the bottom of all of our hearts, our entire team, Team 127, the electricity at DKS this weekend was another level. I, I knew we had more in there, but to see it come out and see the cell phone lights like we're at a concert and it's just the place was rocking. It was, um, it was the best atmosphere I've ever seen it. And uh, just appreciate the fans, the crowd, the community. Um, so happy that we, our team, our players were able to contribute some, you know, some memories uh, that, um, that the kids and the people of this community will, will take with them forever and just know that there's more to do. Um, as fun as that was celebrating a regional championship, the, the story is still being written for Team 127. There's more work to be done. We have uh, a huge weekend ahead and uh, look forward to more electricity out of DKS. Uh, but all in all, just very proud of this team. They you know, they are a team that's, um, they've been about all the right things since day one. They compete in everything they do from the classroom to the field and uh, how they serve the community and just the type of dudes they are. And uh, they deserve to be called champions forever. So very, very proud of this group. Um, and uh, they've earned this. They've certainly earned this, and there's more to play for, which is which is even better. All right, we're going to go to the third row first, then back to the second row, and then the cameras. That'll be our first three. I'll start with this is David Hood of TigerNet.com, and I'll start with Coach Package, but then each of the players. Coach, what possessed you to run out there and jump on top of the wall uh, and, and celebrate? And then for all the players, what was that like to, you know, finally let loose and celebrate with with the fans like that? Uh, for me, screw it, why not? Uh, you know, I like, I like getting in the mix with these guys. Sometimes I think I'm younger than I am, so, um, you know, but I, I just was uh, really uh, just inspired by the moment and just, you know, wanted to, uh, wanted to jump up into the crowd. All right, we'll start with Jacob down there to make a comment on that question, then Blake, and then Austin. Yeah, it was amazing just to be a part of something like this and uh, to be able to go into the outfield and just see the fans out there after you know winning tonight was something that you know you can't really describe. It was just a it was just a great feeling. I would say probably one of the coolest things, if not the coolest thing, I've ever done on a baseball field. When we were doing the All and Matter, uh, Coach Baggage kind of tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, "We're going to the Cajun Cafe. We're jumping up there." And we have a, a picture of it on the wall in our facility. So I'm like, "Man, that would be so cool." And, to be able to be a part of that, it was awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't really say it any better than those two just said it, but it's one of the coolest experiences that I've ever been a part of. Um, you know, I don't think anything will beat that until, you know, ever probably. So next weekend. That's <laughs> focused on right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the second row and then back to the cameras. Uh, Blake, Trevor Gross, CUTigers.com. So that was the coolest thing we've ever done on a baseball field was the old hidden ball trick uh, tonight, the second coolest. I mean, take us through that. How hard was it to play it cool like you did? And, and you really got Ethan out of a jam there early. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, me and Ethan, we did that last year. So we had pretty good chemistry on that. I don't really remember how I ended up with the ball, but I ended up with the ball and I kind of, you know, I just like gave Ethan like a fist bump, like, let's go. But kind of, I think they thought I gave the ball to him. Or they just weren't paying attention. So I stood next to the bag and I was just waiting for him to, I was waiting to see what he does. And I was actually going to give the ball back because I thought he saw my glove. But sure enough, he stepped right off. I'm like, let's go. And I tagged him. And Ethan didn't step on the mound, called him out, and it was awesome. All right, let's go to the back with the cameras. Then we're going to go to the front row. Cameras, you, you want us a question? Yes, you're right. Uh, Coach, after such a big celebration, how do you, uh, 
refocus the guys to, like you said, you know, recalibrate and win more games? Well, these guys will they'll do that. I mean, they've been able to center themselves um, so many times. I mean, it's it's the reason why we've been able to come back from so many deficits. They don't. They know the. They understand mental toughness is being able to get back to the middle and uh, and being able to stay centered and get back to neutral. So. We're certainly going to enjoy this one tonight, but come tomorrow, um, you know, we're going to figure out what's next, who we're playing, um, and start our preparation for that. Um, so, we, you know, we, we know that we didn't come this far only to come this far, and there's, there's much more to be done. But when you do accomplish something and you have these checkpoint moments that are these awesome memory-making things along the way, you gotta, you got to go all in and celebrate that. Um, so it would have been an opportunity missed if we didn't jump into the Cajun Cafe and hang out with everyone in the cheap seats, throwing beer on us. I mean, that, you know, that was the best beer shower you could ever ask for. Um, but that's what we want. We want, we want our players to experience that. We want our fans to experience that. And we want to just do that over and over and over again as many times as possible. So uh, I'm glad we did it. But we we very are, are very aware that there's more to be done and. Uh, but we're going to celebrate it tonight for sure. All right, let's go to the front row. Um, Jason Priester, Clemson Insider, to Austin and Blake. You guys are, you know, two of the players been around here the longest. Um, what's it mean to finally get this program over that hump and back in super regional plays? It's, it's been almost 15 years. Yeah, I mean, it's a special. I mean, you can see it with our celebration, jumping in the Cajun Cafe. Something that hasn't been done in a while, but, you know, this is what we work for all year. and. Uh, you know, really happy this program is back to where where it belongs. But obviously, we have more work to do. But this is this is pretty special. Um, yeah, I, you know, coming in here three years ago, I never would have thought you know, this is where we'd be now. But you know, looking back on it, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Um, you know, it's just an awesome feeling to be able to kind of you know have this feeling with some of the guys that um, you know have been here a long time. You know, Blake and Nick Clayton and some of those guys. But yeah, it's. A, very awesome feeling. All right, let's go to the second row, and then we're going to go back to the cameras. Second row, John. I'm sorry. Uh, John Blau, Post Interior uh, Coach. The hidden ball trick, I know you guys used that at FSU last year, and that was a real turning point for you guys. Uh, does Blake have free range just do that whenever he wants? Was that a call? And how kind of appropriate is that this, like, again, you use it and it takes you guys to the next level? I had no idea he was doing it, and um, I didn't know he did it at, at Florida State. I didn't know he was doing it tonight. I was getting ready to go out to the mound, and um, that changed the entire inning. Changed the you know gave Ethan um, a huge boost. I mean, he was going to go from you know two runners on, runner at third, one out to uh, or second and third, or whatever it was. But it changed the whole complexion of the early outing for him. You know, helped him settle down. I thought. But no, they, they um, you know, they, they have playground mentality and that's what we want. We want our guys to play mentally free. We want them to improvise, whether it's Hindi doing a no-look glove flip, Blake trying to hit a ball trick, you know, whatever. Like they just, if they can harness their, their 10-year-old selves and little league self and just play with a smile on their face and <coughs> just go get it, go for it. I mean, screw it, why not? I mean, that's how we're going to be champions. We, um, we're not going to be conservative. We're going to, we're going to go all the way to the aggressive, stupid line and, and floor it. Let's go to the cameras in the back. Do you have a question? Um, yeah, this is for Coach Backage. Um, for so long, it feels like you know we've been asking the question, what will it take for the team to break through and win a regional? And for you guys to accomplish that tonight and for you to celebrate with everyone on the field, what was kind of going through your mind in that moment? I've said this before, but it, for me, it's like I instantly go to dad mode Christmas morning and watching young kids tear open presents and to see the genuine, authentic expressions of joy on their faces. That's what we're chasing. We're chasing the celebratory moments. That's, you know, I saw it in not only all of our guys, but all the fans and taking the lap and giving everyone a high five. I mean, that's what it's all about. And um, so that's all I was thinking about is just, you know, just happy for the kids, proud. Happy for the community. Um, just, just really happy for everyone who got to experience it and make those memories. Let's go to the second row right here. And then we're going to go here one more time and then back here in the third row. That'll be three. Uh, Darian Carter, uh, Big Greenville News. Uh, Coach, uh, the eighth inning was kind of wild uh, with Costa making their run, but you guys kind of responded like you guys kind of always do. What was the message in the dugout? Is it just 
business as usual and we're used to these situations or it's like, come on guys, let's, let's try to get some runs? We usually, when another team scores, we'll talk about winning the frame, so winning the inning. So if they score three, we'll want to score four. Um, but in the, at that point, we already had a lead. We had Gordo on the mound. It was just more of, hey, let's 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 get a couple, you know. And then Cam steps in there and hits a bomb, and, um, and then it was just kind of then an error, and then it was just kind of on. And uh, we had been hitting a lot of balls hard tonight, and it seemed like they made 15 running catches in the gap. I mean, they, we we squared a lot of balls up, and just they didn't fall, and didn't fall, and didn't fall, and finally they all fell in that inning. Um, which led to the big inning. But that was just kind of the explosion we were looking for. Uh, and I think once that, once that momentum started rolling, it just started catching a lot more steam. And you know, a lot of guys hitting balls hard. And, um, you know, starting with Cam, but then Pesetta's ball was like 200 miles an hour off the bat. That thing was a rope. Uh, and then Alden Mathis, huge hit to bust it open. Hindi right behind him. Both those guys with two RBI doubles. Um, so really, it just the whole thing just started to uh, just to just to get contagious and in a good way for us. Let's go to the second row. Awesome, uh, Trevor Burrow, CUTigers.com. Huge strike out there in the eighth when the Coastal made it six to five. I think that pitch was 90, 96 miles per hour. Um, I asked Coach Backage on Monday. You know, it's, been, it's kind of been closer by committee all season for you guys. You were an early season weekend starter. I asked him if you had really embraced that role as a closer. It looks like you really have. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, it just comes down to doing what the team needs. Um, you know, whatever these guys need. You know, everyone in that bullpen is going to have their back, and just even in the bullpen, you know, guys handing it off to the next. Um, you know, Ethan handed it.